It is no secret that we are now living in the era of the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is now here. This means that humanity has only two paths, either the path of the truth, which destroys illusions and restores the truth. And of course, this path requires participation of every person, but it is also the best path for people, the path that grants manifestation of the Holy Spirit and grants thousands of years of infinite happiness to many generations, or another path, the path of people's inactivity. This is called the last era. In the Gospel of John, chapter 14, it is said, And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another Comforter, that he may abide with you forever, even the Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it sees him not, neither knows him. But you know him, for he dwells with you, and shall be in you. Why does Jesus say, the world knows him not? Because prophets come and declare themselves openly. While the Holy Spirit, just like all of us, is living among us, existing, he is really here, he resides among us, and so on. In the last time, this is his function, so to say. And since we say that all the prophets have gone, and Muhammad was the last one indeed, there can be no more religions, and the last chance remains for humanity. So here, the Holy Spirit has to reside, and He should look at what people will choose. What you and I were talking about earlier, the wonderful world, or that which is now. Well, and speaking the language of economics, we sort of keep developing this business, or we close it, because it's unprofitable. Well, since the Holy Spirit is both the advocate and the judge, we talked about this too. His function is to separate the dead from the alive. There is a meaning in this as well. Another interesting thing is that he will be hidden from you, meaning he won't shout about himself loudly. One who sees, who has spiritual eyes and sees him, who has spiritual ears and hears him, one who accepts him, that one knows who he is. Such a person will see, recognize and come to him, and will serve the spiritual world just like he does. After all, the Holy Spirit is busy with serving God, because God is one, in His greatness, right? The Holy Spirit cannot serve anyone else. In the same way, people should serve God, but it's more fun to serve together, and so on. To build such a world, just like you and I were dreaming, where people love and respect each other, where they live peacefully and rejoice. I said in the previous video that life brings only joy, joy and pleasure. In the same way, life here should also bring joy and pleasure. We should eliminate sorrows from our life. And this is easy, and people can do that. This is what all of us should strive for. That's the point. As for those who don't see Him, well, they don't see Him, and that's fine. They don't see Him, and He will also pretend that He doesn't see them afterwards, right? And He's no longer the advocate, but already the judge. Do you see how simple this is? We ourselves choose both our destiny, here and the after-death destiny. Most often, due to pridefulness, nothing prevents a person from seeing Him except a person's pridefulness. How can I? I'll exalt myself. I'll exalt myself over this one or that one. Or how can the Comforter or someone else, they say differently, in different religions. How can he come to another nation or in another country? They forget that. God conceals the truth. Why does he conceal it? He conceals it not in order for those who are able not to see it. He precisely covers and doesn't make it visible. After all, he sends a prophet visible, whom people should see and through whom they should hear. While the Comforters, are not prophets, not at all. They do not bring the teaching, no. They speak of what was in scriptures, they know the essence of scriptures, you see. I mean, those who come, they won't tell you where and what comma is put or something, this was written by people, but they know the essence of every scripture, and they come here in order to restore this essence. If people don't heed it, reject it, and reject the Comforter, they remain with what they have. That's the choice of people, right? But many actually say that, since Jesus said, the Comforter has to come, He must come among us. Or let's say another nation says, He must come among us. 
Yet what's the difference if we are all one? It is us who divide by color, we divide by speech, by language, we divide by some status. We do everything to the devil's dictation, we keep dividing and dividing. But what do we unite by? Do we unite each other by anything? Name at least something. It is possible to unite only by the internal, only by the spirit. It's the only thing that gives unification. Everything else gives division. Even in those unions which people arrange, there is still division, right? Yes. And they still separate each other, they always fight for their status and struggle for something. Whispered by the devil. But why? Maybe let us live. While we act like mice, we chase and torture. Whom do we torture? Ourselves, first and foremost. Right. And we ourselves suffer, of course. We actually build this life. We create it and we build problems for ourselves. We say, we do everything for children. Yet what do we leave to our children? Yes, we earned some money and left it to them. But what does money have to do with this if we leave them empty and bare? Whatever we give, in any quantity, we haven't given them the main thing, we haven't given them life. We gave them temporary existence. Let it be even some well-to-do existence or something else. Well, some people have succeeded in that, others haven't. That's not the point. What kind of a world have we left for children? And what could we have done? We could have made a wonderful world where there are no hungry people, where there are no drug addicts and drunkards. After all, why does a person drink alcohol? He drinks it because of pridefulness, first and foremost in order to rise and exalt himself. That's what it gives. Alcohol and drug addiction is lies. It is self-deception. And everybody knows this. In fact, when a person is spiritually free at least a little bit, he will never take alcohol or drugs, he doesn't need them. Not because of something. Everything that alters consciousness, everything that strengthens the power of consciousness over personality, he will never take it. Why would he? to reinforce illusions. There are plenty of illusions around anyway. Wherever you look, illusion is everywhere. That's the point. Ingeri Mikhailovich, and how can a person recognize the Comforter? In the same way as the Holy Spirit, only through his inner world. This is very easy. You simply shouldn't reject what the soul feels. Well, it is personality that feels, not the soul. It's a wrong expression. You shouldn't reject what personality feels. While consciousness will resist, it certainly will. This is its function. If you don't understand this, and if you listen to consciousness, you will not learn anything, you will not see anything, and you will just remain with consciousness. Yes, as people actually say, the human world is divided into two categories, those who accept the Holy Spirit and those who resist Him. But there shouldn't be these two categories. There should be one category — people. God's people. Have you heard such an expression? Yes. That's exactly how it should be. And it depends on everyone, on absolutely every person, whether it will be like that or not. What is needed? To wake up and to awaken another person, right? If you strive for this. But if you resist it, then admit that you are the devil's servant. Just admit it honestly to yourself. And you yourself create your own after that faith. People say, who knows when that death will come? This moment will pass, and there will be death. It is much closer. I'm not frightening you, I'm just explaining that time is a relative concept, just like space and everything else. And this life is nothing more than a dream or illusion. It flies by in a flash, whereas that which remains will last very long. There will be time to change your mind and to comprehend, but it will be impossible to do or correct anything. In the New Testament, it is said that God's Spirit is contrasted with the earthly force as a direct action of God. It is not by force, nor by strength, but by My Spirit, and it is interesting that not by force, nor by strength, but by God's Spirit. Yet what are people always accustomed to? What is force? It's an army, it is something else, and… Right, some external manifestations. Of course, everything external, everything earthly, that which we are accustomed to, we are actually guided by this everywhere. And again, you and I were talking about building a new society, but in fact, it is not a new society, it's the kind of society it should be. As for me personally, I would like to see such a world. I would really like to see it with my own eyes. 
ordinary, earthly ones, to behold it in reality, how people have gathered and built a world which is worthy of living in, not only for people, but into which the Holy Spirit could also come, or that very Comforter, not in order to judge people, but in order to rejoice. Can you imagine how wonderful this is? From one joy into another. It's the same as to come, I don't know, to a kindergarten, well, in an earthly understanding, even not to a kindergarten. I would say, for instance, to come to a maternity home, to a chamber where there are a lot of babies. This touches a deep chord in your heart, doesn't it? Thus awakens these maternal powers. Well, maternal powers are exactly the powers of Alat, that which is given, that which prolongs and gives life in the human understanding. Isn't it pleasant? It is. Imagine how God would love this world, and how He would distinguish it among other worlds. I think it is worth applying a little effort for the sake of God's love, right? And for the sake of preserving this world, it is worth it. I would really like to see this kind of world, the true one, the way it should be. Right. And everything depends on people themselves, on everyone. Only on them, of course. No one will come and do that instead of them. No one will build anything. People should do this. Powers and opportunities are given to them for that. It's just that they spend them not where they should. They spend them on the earthly, yet maybe they should spend them even on the earthly, but efficiently, so as to gladden God and rejoice themselves. Right? Right. In the Old Testament, there is such a mention by different prophets that a time will come when the Holy Spirit will pour out on people. And there are disputes regarding where this will happen, in what part of the world, how this will happen, and what that will be. Well, let's say, if we approach this understanding correctly, this will happen when that world will manifest itself. Note, that world will manifest itself, which you and I were talking about, in unity, before God's world. Can you imagine this? We were talking about it earlier. The Holy Spirit is among people, and He is in every person, but in abundance. And here it is exactly said, pour out, that is, it will be given on top of that. This indicates that people, while still being here, in their bodies, will experience happiness, the happiness of the boundless world, only when they succeed to unite, and when they all become faithful to God, all of them. This is possible, and this is easy. Thank you. Abundance and outpour of the Holy Spirit on everyone signifies the advent of the era of the Holy Spirit, the era when the entire humanity will restore Eden on earth by building an ideal society and thus will restore the lost connection with God, will live in God's love and serve the spiritual world. And this is what we've been talking about now. And many people heard about it. But in order for everyone to hear, it depends on everyone. Everyone who understands this essence can convey it to another person. And if they are imbued, they can do a lot. Everything is given, and they will get support and be strengthened if they want. This is possible. Right? Right. And this desire and aspiration is manifested internally. The main thing is for people to be strong in this choice. And this strength depends on their choice. And here indeed, you don't care about yourself, but you care about all. Here, everyone, 
No matter what he does, no matter what position he is in, or who he is here, he can serve God as much as it is possible for a human. What can be better than to grant God not an individual angel, although this is very important, but to manifest a world? And this is possible.